Hello, pen friends. Welcome back to another pen review video. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at Zizo again. Zizo is a U.S. company that sells uh, several different kinds of pens that they have made for them in uh, in limited edition batches. And we're going to be taking a look at a couple models of their one of their more recent batches, the Legrand. So here are the two pens. Um, they come in the standard Zizo. Um, it's a kind of a clamshell box, but instead of opening like this, it opens like this from the middle. It's kind of cool. And if you've seen my other review videos of the Zizo, which you can find uh, of Zizo pens, which you can find over on penhabit.com on the, the show notes there, uh, you can see what that looks like. I didn't want to talk about it too much here. But they uh, sent two of these over for me uh, for review and then giveaway. So uh, these were not bought by me. They were provided by Zizo, and I will be giving them away to uh, to winners in a giveaway here, not too not too far in the distance here on the pen habit. So, there are two versions that they sent to me. This one is the Moldavite version, uh, named after minerals, and this is the Dioptase version. Now, both of them are limited editions. Uh, they made about two hundred and thirty of each color in twenty seventeen. Both of them have a very intricate guilloche pattern under the lacquer. The lacquer is is kind of done in color and then a translucent lacquer, and they've got usually about 25 layers of this high-gloss lacquer that are, according to the information that the company gave me, uh, polished in between each layer. They're, it's heat-dried and then manually polished before they apply the next layer to make sure. And it's crystal clear. It feels rock-solid, um, really quite a, a lovely material um, and lovely color. I am per I particular like particularly like the Dioptase version. Uh, I like that kind of tealy blue color. This olivey green of the Moldavite is also really nice, but of the two, I think I have a slight preference here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and mostly focus on the Moldavite version, though, um, to kind of go through the design, because the design's mostly the same, and then I'll point out the little differences. So you've got a little... Um, finial up here at the top with the uh, the black, and then you've got a clip. It's a pretty standard kind of springy folded metal clip there, but nice and solid. Uh, the center cap band says Zizo Maestro Legrand, and then it's got N122 or number 122 in the year of manufacture, which is 2017. Then you've got a Greek key here and here on the pen. The barrel kind of bulges out a bit, and then you've got this long finial on the end with threads, and that's so the pen can cap. So it takes one, two full turns to uncap the pen, and then you can post it on the back by screwing it on uh, if you want. It is very long and very back heavy. This is not a light pen. This is a, a brass bodied pen, I believe, and uh, it's it's got some some heft to it. So if you like a heavier pen, this is one you might like. I don't use this one posted, even though you can screw the, the cap on the back. I find it too long and too back heavy for that. So the section underneath tapers down. You've got a metal finial here, or metal tenon on the section, and a standard international converter. And then you've got a steel nib, Zizo branded. It's a bicolor nib, and it looks like a Yovo nib, if I had to guess. Uh, steel colored nib and a it's a fine designation. Now, one of the things I don't love about a lot of Zizo's pens is they've just decided we're going to offer the pen in fine. There are no nib options. There are no other nibs that you can buy on the website. What they have is what they have, and that's kind of you're stuck with that unless you want to buy a third party nib and swap it out. So, if you want something other than a fine nib, unfortunately, it's just not available on these pens. That and that is in my book a pretty solid indicator of the audience that Zizo is going for with these pens. I don't believe that they are really focused too heavily on the fountain pen enthusiast market because if they were, they would be giving a lot of options to fountain pen users who wanted these pens. Instead, they appear to be pointing directly toward kind of the, the non-enthusiast market, someone who wants a fountain pen but is not a, a serious collector or you know a really serious enthusiast for fountain pens. Otherwise, you know, there'd be options. Um, in terms of construction quality, I think this is it's rock solid. This is a pen you could run over with your car. You know, it's it's heavy metal. It's 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 really solid. 
Now, I can't speak to the longevity of the lacquer. It feels very, very strong. I can't imagine this would be the kind of lacquer that would peel away or flake, that kind of thing. It feels rock solid here. Um, in the hand, it's when it's uncapped, it's actually, it, for me, in my hand, it actually fits very nicely. As I mentioned, it is heavy, so it's not a light pen, but it's balanced, nicely balanced, and kind of re- just rests in the hand for me, uh, but not when it's, when it's posted. So let's go ahead and do a, some comparisons and some measurements, and then I'm going to show you how this fine nib writes. Before I get into the writing review, just a quick call out that the Private Reserve Electric DC Blue is another one of those uh, Empty Bottle 2018 Challenges inks that I'm going to be going after. It's a dark blue that I really like. It's probably, I think it's the second or third bottle of ink I ever bought. Um, It was before I had a lot of experience with inks. I wasn't sure what I was looking for. Um, It's a gorgeous color. It was made by Private Reserve for the DC show one year and uh, made it into their regular rotation. And over the past several years, Private Reserve has stumbled a little bit. Once the owner passed away, there have been some problems, some consistency problems. A lot of manufacturers have stopped carrying the line, or a lot of retailers rather, have stopped carrying the line. And I personally have had issues with some of the older bottles growing mold on me. So this is one that I wanted to use up because I love the color. I love the ink. I don't know how long it's going to last. Um, and, you know, perhaps by the time I use up this bottle, I've heard rumors that the employees of the company have bought it from the owner and uh, or are looking to buy it from the owner and, and take it back up again. So hopefully it will become, uh, it will 
kind of regain where it's where it was and become a, a popular ink once again. But in the meantime, I want to use up what I got because I really like it. Okay, so writing. Um, this is a wonderful writer. This nib is very smooth. It's nice and wet. You can see, um, for a fine nib, it's very wet, uh, which I like a lot. Um, you know, I don't normally go after the fine nibs, but man, look at that. Isn't that a beautiful blue? Um, it really is a lovely writer. And the length of that number six nib and the length of the section together really do make for a comfortable writing experience in the hand, in my hand anyway. Now, you know, I've said it a couple times. I'll repeat myself again. It is a heavier nib, but a heavier pen, but it's, I don't find it uncomfortable at all. This is a lovely writer. Now, I really do wish I had been able to get a medium nib on this, but that's just not an option. And, uh, you know, I won't dwell on it too much. Um, in terms of reverse writing, it's a good reverse writer. It's actually a very good reverse writer. Um, you're going to get like an extra fine line there. Not a lot of line variation out of this. It's steel Yovo style nib. Um, I'm just checking the, uh, yeah, it doesn't say if whether it's a Yovo nib in the, the fact sheet that I got from the company over here. Um, but, uh, it, it looks and feels like a Yovo nib. I mean, this is a very similar experience to a lot of the Yovo pens that I've used before, Yovo nibs that I've used before. So overall, it's a very, I think it's a very pretty color and pretty material. I don't, I'm not gaga for the design of the pen, you know, the shape of the pen itself, but I do really like the color. I like the feel in the hand and I really like the nib. It's a, it's a very good fine nib. So, it, you know, it's a limited edition. You know, the, the Moldavite has, uh, excuse me, it's, it's platinum plated. And the, uh, the dioptase is going to be the gold plated. So you've got the different colors there. And, uh, you know, overall, I think these are really nice pens. They are not super cheap, so let's talk about that next. So the Moldavite is $160 US and the Dioptase is $170 US. Now, I, I do need to make a slight correction to something I said earlier, which is that these pens, you can get a medium nib, but you have to request at the time of ordering. It's not something that they, they offer that option on the website. So you have to specifically request a medium nib instead of a fine. But that's the only other option that's available. Um, it also comes in a red and a, um, a tanzanite blue in addition to these two colors. Um, but uh, at $160, $170, that's putting this pen into into some pretty stiff competition territory. At that point, you're looking at things like the Lamy 2000, which is a piston filler. You're looking at things like the Platinum 3776, which has a wonderful nib. You're looking at the Pilot Custom 91 or 92. Uh, I mean, you're looking at a lot of comparisons. Edison, uh, Franklin Christoph. There's just a lot of pens in this price range. Now, most of those pens are not very heavy metal pens. And very heavy metal pens have kind of fallen out of favor with the community. Now, I'll say these are rock solid. They are, I think they're very pretty. I love the guilloche. I love the color of the lacquer, that translucent lacquer. But they feel kind of chunky in comparison to some of those other options. They feel a little bit less refined. They're great writers great writers. So if you really liked it and you wanted them, I could, I could pretty, pretty confidently recommend these to you. Um, but I feel like the, the price to value ratio is just a little bit off here, especially when you get very heavy metal pens, not anywhere near as nicely made, but for 10 or $20 from some of these Chinese manufacturers. So do I like the pen? Yes. Do I feel like the pen is worth $170? <sighs> no. I'd say keep an eye out for a 20% off coupon or a coupon code or something like that. And then you're going to be, then it's going to be a little bit more in the realm of what I would consider a, a good value. 
All right. I think that is going to do it for this review. Thank you to Zizo for sending these two pens along for review and giveaway. The giveaway for these will be coming up fairly soon. So keep an eye out on penhabit.com or on the Penhabit Facebook page or Twitter page. Um, I'm using a new platform called Gleam for instead of Rafflecopter for my giveaways. So it's a little bit easier to do the giveaways, uh, to enter the giveaways than it has been in the past. And uh, I look forward to hearing from you guys what you think about the Legrand, Maestro Legrands from Zizo and, uh, and you know, what colors you're most interested in. So feel free to leave a comment here on YouTube or over on penhabit.com. You can check out the other photos over there on penhabit.com as well. And we will see you here soon for another pen review video. Take care. Bye.